I have a couple of pike deadbait rigs I use on my local rivers that I thought might be of interest. The first is a simple running lead link Paternoster rig. It's a strong east tie rig that offers little resistance to a fish when it takes the bait. A low resistance rig is better because if a pike feels anything it will get suspicious and reject the bait. If you are not familiar with the Paternoster rig then please see my film Paternoster rig in the glossary. The running link to the lead is made of six pound monofilament, usually of a length to have the weight a couple of inches short of the second hook. The trace is 20 pound wire 18 to 24 inches long. The main line is 50 pound braid. The swivels and the snap link swivels I use in these rigs are rated at 60 pound. Because pike are a powerful fish, it's important to use good quality swivels that you know the strength of. This rig is deliberately simple. It offers little resistance to a fish and will cause a bite indication no matter what direction the pike takes the bait. It's important that the lead link is much weaker than the rest of the rig. If the lead is caught on anything while you're playing the fish, the link will break leaving the lead behind. The rig can also shed the lead if the main line gets cut or breaks. Use this rig at a distance or in shallow water. As a rough guide, use it in any swim where the main line enters the water at a shallow angle. Always feather the line down hard on the cast to ensure that the bait is flung out in front. Then trap the line completely just as the rig hits the water. This will ensure that the rig does not tangle on the way down to the river bed. This rig is ideal for fishing downstream of your position, but if you need to fish upstream, the water flow may cause the bait to settle on the river bed close to your main line. To prevent a pike from biting through the main line when it picks up the bait, a wire uptrace may be needed. The uptrace should be stronger than the trace with the hooks, but weaker than the main line. I use a 30 pound up trace with my setup. Remember to include a link swivel for the lead link within the up trace. Please use the weakest lead link you can because it can no longer slide off the line in the event of a main line break. The second rig is for deeper water or fishing close in. It's a pattern oster rig where the trace is running, not the lead. The lead link should be a couple of inches longer than the hook trace wire when the trace is attached to the snap link. Use this rig in any situation where the main line enters the water at a steep angle, close to the bank or in deep water for example. Now it's tempting to just drop the rig into the water when fishing close in, but this rig tangles very easily if it's not cast correctly. Cast out into the river then trap the line completely just as the rig hits the water and allow the rig to sink down in an arc to the bottom. Both of these rigs are running rigs to reduce any resistance felt by the fish. The weight of the lead can also play an important part in this. Use a lead that only just holds bottom. If the fish takes the bait far enough to move the lead, it will still feel very little resistance. Both of these rigs are fished with a tight line to the lead. This is especially important for the close-in deep water rig. The bite indicator should be heavy enough to hold everything up. With the line held tight, virtually any movement of the bait will cause a beep or a visual indication. I like to use a cheap bite alarm with a monkey climber. You could use a bobbin or a hanger or a swinger. Whatever you use, make sure you're able to adjust the weight of the indicator. A dead bait will not wriggle or try to escape the pike. Because of this, pike can take a dead bait and swallow it down in just a few seconds. Strike if you're sure you have a bite. If in doubt, strike anyway. To avoid a deeply hooked pike, never leave your rod unattended. I can't say that I've ever noticed that how I hook the dead bait makes any difference to the number of pike caught. So I attach the bait in whatever way I think best or most secure. If I'm using a sardine for example, I always put the barbed point of the second hook through the skull of the sardine, then two points of the end hook through the flank. 
Sardines are very soft skinned fish. By hooking through the bone of the skull, the bait has a much better chance of staying on. With a mackerel, for example, I hook through the tail bone and just use one point of the end hook in the flank, as the mackerel have much tougher skin. I do most of my pike fishing in the winter. The fish are at their fighting best and are a species that will feed in cold weather. Unlike other fish, pike don't graze or even feed every day. They will eat their fill and then digest their food over a few days before hunting again. This can make pike fishing a bit hit and miss, so don't expect to catch on every trip. There are two approaches to river pike fishing, roving and static. It's said that pike follow shoals of silvers, which may be true when a pike is hungry. I suspect though they spend much of their time just holed up watching the world swim by. If you drop a dead bait right in front of a slumbering pike, it may just take it as an easy ready meal. But don't expect a slumbering pike to go looking. This is when roving can be so productive. Roving allows you to try different swims and search for the pike. Although I don't like to stay in any swim more than an hour, I feel if the pike are there and interested, they will find the bait in under an hour. Always creep between the swims when roving. Heavy footsteps or vibrations through the bank will scare the pike off, as will fiddling with the rig. Cast in once and leave it alone. Even if it doesn't land quite in the right place, leave well alone. Pike are accomplished predators, with at least half a million years of practice bred into them. Their senses are second to none when it comes to finding food. A dead bait somewhere nearby will be found and happily eaten by a hungry pike, which is why a static approach can also work. I prefer roving, but if the weather is bad or I'm feeling lazy, I will stay in one swim and hope the pike are hungry. <laughs> I've never been one to feed a swim to attract a shoal of silvers in the hope that they will in turn attract the pike. This may work in a pond, but in a river I'm not so sure. I prefer to feed two or three chunks of dead bait, chumming on a small scale you might say. I like to think that all that blood and guts being washed downstream will attract the hungry pike. With a static or roving, Placing the bait in the right place will go a long way to improve your chances of catching. On a river of more than a few yards wide, for every pike I've caught in the middle, I've caught three within two yards of the bank. This is because pike like slack areas, not only to hold up in, but also to hunt from as an ambush predator. I've caught some of my best fish along plain, apparently lifeless, straight bits of river, the straits often have a steady predictable flow where the pike can find nice quiet areas, look for quiet water close into the bank, look for slack or look for undercuts. A straight bit of river with cover from an overhanging tree will often be home to a pike. This smaller river is weedy in the summer, so fishing for pike is easier in the winter once all the weeds have died back. I find the best time to fish here is in the new year, after the weeds have died and the floods have washed all the debris away. Being quite narrow, I find it's less important to fish within a yard or two of the bank. Instead, it's better to present the bait on the clear area of riverbed where the pike can easily find it. In the end, there's no substitute for getting to know the river you fish. Spending time fishing and observing the river at different times of the year is the very best way of working out where the pike like to be. In my experience, fishing with dead bait catches pike in the low doubles, with some small stuff, but the occasional big fish. This 20 pounder was caught in deep water, literally right under the rod tip. Well, there you go, there's a couple of rigs that might be of use to you. Thanks for watching. Please visit the Amateur Angling YouTube channel or the Amateur Angling website and blog for more films and articles on fishing.